Now let's look at implementing yum. The first thing we'll do is set up a package repository on this server, Linux CBT Serve 2. And then we'll explore using yum to manage packages. So the features include package management, of course, and auto dependency resolution, which makes it superior to RPM. There is also the ability to specify multiple package sources. So ability to cite or specify multiple package sources as you can with aptitude slash apt within Debian. Now before we go into the details, let's mirror the content from our Debian box to the local system. So our first task is to get that going. So mirror packages directory on local system. We need to do this because the version of RPM differs in Enterprise 6 from 5 and is required in order to interact with the repository database that's going to be set up. So it needs to be on a Red Hat system running the version of RPM that's included with 6 or in a system that's running the same version of RPM. So it could be a different distribution so long as the RPM version is the same. Now we're going to place this package repository in a web accessible location. In var www.html, that's our default web root. So let's make a directory calling it rel6. And in rel6, we'll synchronize the various packages. Let's do a which LFTP. It's installed, so we'll LFTP to our Debian instances URL, which is the following, into the package directory. So we'll just navigate to rel6. And let's take off the rest of this just to be sure that it works. We want to be in this directory packages to synchronize the content from there to our local system. So let's copy this full URL and paste it into our shell. So LFTP followed by the following will take us to that location. And locally, we are in the rel6 directory. So we want all of the RPMs to be available locally. Now we can use the mirror command with the verbose option to download everything to our local server. This will download all the packages and slowly but surely create the hierarchy. From a separate shell, we can watch the directory grow. Let's DUCHS, for example, var www.html. And it's already at 173, 200 megs. So this is roughly 10%. So it's moving rather rapidly and the transfer rate should be echoed per file that's being moved but it's rather rapid so it flies by. We're seeing on the order of 9 megabytes per second or so times 8, 72 megabits per second. So roughly 100 base T. So that means there's probably a fast ethernet card in serve 2 as opposed to gigabit. But with all of that said, let's discuss what's happening here. So yum requires that you set up a repository. So that's how it's able to access the packages and provide them to the calling client. It uses the package repository. So we need to mirror the packages directory on local system. And we do that using LFTP, followed by the URL to the directory, followed by the mirror command that mirrors the contents of that HTTP resource. And that's what's ensuing currently. Once we have all of the RPMs available locally in our web accessible directory, the reason why we've made it web accessible is so that other yum clients can connect to it. The next step will be to create a repository database using a special tool called create repo. So the next step for us is to run create repo which requires that the create repo package is installed and we'll do this against var www.html rel6 this will create a subdirectory so let's just note creates subdirectory 
repo data and various DB files to serve packages to yum clients. So basically create repo reads the package directory and it opens all of the RPMs, extracts the metadata from them and stores it into a database that can then be queried by yum clients who have HTTP access to the server which is why we've placed it in a web accessible directory which means you need to have Apache running. So we'll run create repo. Now we should also note that create repo needs to be installed. So confirm that create repo RPM is installed. And again, this must be performed on a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 system or the same version of RPM. So locally from the shell, from a free shell, let's take this one here. Will RPM query grep create repo? That should be the full name of the package. And this will query the list, and indeed it's open and installed and available. And if we RPM query list create repo, this will return information related to create repo, including its main binaries, which allow you to merge, modify, and create. We're interested with create, and we see a lot of Python scripts, so this should be largely done in Python. Let's take a look at the progress of the build of rwwhtml, and in fact, it's almost finished. It should be finished. Let's take a look at the mirror, and it's almost there. We're towards the end of the RPMs. So that's rather quick to move 2 point something gigabytes of data. So now we've moved all that data. Let's quit the LFTP session. And here's your average transfer rate of just under 11 megabytes per second or 88 megabits per second or 88% of 100 base T, roughly. So now that the directory is in place, we don't need the full DVD tree, although you could put the full DVD tree, but then you'd need to build your repository against the packages subdirectory of the full tree which is why we've extracted just the packages directory so to run create repo and we've already confirmed with rpm that create repos install we'll use create repo against var www.html rel6 and this will create the appropriate sqlite database and ancillary s files to support yum clients and this will set up rather quickly the structure that's necessary to configure yum and once that's in place we'll do the next step which is to set up our first yum client which is the existing system again client server relationship so we're currently in the rel6 directory let's move a level up and run create repo since it's relative to our current directory against rel6 this will index all of the various files. If you run create repo with no options, turning on help for example, you'll see the various help that's returned. And if you scroll through, you'll see it has a verbose mode and it'll take a base URL to base its packages off of and it'll also allow you to specify the database file that's to be created. We're just going to go with defaults. So let's create repo with the verbose option turned on against rel6 and this will set up the structure for us and notice it has to query all 2679 packages meaning it opens them extracts the metadata stores it into the SQLite database and makes it queryable for the yum clients that are out there and part of the metadata includes dependency information so yum clients via the repository will be able to determine what requires what and how to install them and the order in which they should be installed and so on so let's just note that this queries all 2679 but this is subject to change as various subversions of enterprise linux 6 are published so it queries all 2679 for the current version packages and generates a SQLite DB and ancillary files and these will be beneath as mentioned the rep 
data, repository data directory. And then once that's in place, our next step is to set up a yum client. So set up first yum client, which will be, of course, the local system. This will allow us to use yum. Now, yum uses a global configuration file located in ETC called yum.conf. In it, we can place our configuration directives. It also maintains a separate directory where we can place repositories, independent repositories. So you'll see that structure momentarily. So you may optionally place in the primary yum.conf file or in the repo directory where the files are included as part of the larger installation. So let's explore the default config file while this runs. It's still running. It's almost done, actually. But in the interim, let's take a look at etc yum.conf, and you'll see that there's some defaults here defined for the yum local client. So yum uses a following log file, following cache directory, limits on installations, the fact that it should check GPG, and so on. It also notes that you should place your repositories in etc yum.repos.d. That's where we'll create a file that includes the directives that are necessary. Now there are only a handful of directives including a header, a name, and a base URL. There are optional directives but those are the important ones in order to enable yum. So we'll place a repo file with a suffix of repo in the yum.repos.d directory. So let's list that as our next step. So set up first yum client local hosts and we'll do so in yum repos.d and we'll create a file named Linux CBT serve2 for the local system dot repo and in this file we will store the following between single quotes a header like an INI header which describes the name of the repository and we'll just simply use the host name for simplicity followed by the name of the repository which we'll just use the same name again followed by the base URL which is the IP address of the local system or the host name if DNS is properly configured and that's going to be rel6 and beneath rel6 yum will look for the repo data directory which by now should be created so this directive will create our first repository and can also be copied to other yum clients and they can begin taking advantage of yum immediately. So let's see how our process has fared. So this is finished and let's echo the exit status. And now when we navigate into rel6 and in lsltr we see the repo data directory. And this is the directory that yum will query. Let's change into it. And there are the files that have been created that will be cross-referenced. So this is now set. We could do a file against star and we're set to start setting up the yum client. So our repository is the full size for the most part of the DVD sans the other directories, high availability, load balancing, etc. So now let's define this setting in the repo file, Linux CBT serve 2.repo and we need to be root to do so. So let's navigate into etc yum dot repos for repositories dot d and then we'll modify linux cbt serve 2 dot repo for repository this yum framework for those of you familiar with debian is similar to the apt environment sources dot list for example where you specify package repositories now we'll paste our entry we'll bring it back all in it doesn't necessarily need to be tabbed and that should be fine. So that's our first repository. And for each repository, simply deposit a different file. And yum will be able to use them, but try to avoid conflicts where possible. Now we've already imported the GPG key, so packages will be A 